every day every day We pray to greet all the believers in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's a pleasure and honor to be found in the house of the Lord this morning. Just to come and worship the Lord. Amen. Let us all stand on our feet. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's sing with all our heart. Amen. Raise your hand and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a like me. I was. Together, amazing grace, amazing grace, hallelujah. Amazing, ah, amazing grace, how ah, sweet, hallelujah. This save a rich like me. Yeah, I was. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amazing, amazing grace, how sweet, how ah, sick, the Savior, a rich like me, I was. Now I see. It 
was Christ, it was Christ. That my heart to fear and Christ and Christ. My faith freely. Hallelujah. How precious did And I how I feel Praise God, praise God, hallelujah Praise God Praise God the Lord this morning? Do you love the Lord this morning? You can just raise your hand and do you love the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Just wave to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He's ready to be praised. Hallelujah. While I was, I was close, amen. We're going to open the service of the Lord. Hallelujah. If there is any need this morning, I'm going to need need. Hallelujah. You can just raise your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll ask Brother Francis to come forward to open the service of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Most gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, and this morning we appreciate you, Lord. We thank you, O God, for making a way for us, O Lord, to be found in the house of the Lord. We are here, O God, to hear from you, mighty Jesus. May you teach us, O God, all what you want us to be taught of, O God. We humble ourselves this morning, Lord, as we dedicate our hearts to you, O God. For we are here, Lord, to listen to you, O God, to correct us, Lord, and guide us, mighty God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege, O oh God, just to be found in the house of worship, O oh God. It is a great privilege, Father. May you touch it in everyone's heart here, O oh God. Bless us, O oh Lord, by your word, O oh God. O oh Lord, may you bless the preaching of the word this morning, O oh God. May you reach out, O oh God, to those, Father, that are downtrodden, mighty Jesus. Oh, Lord, may you raise the weak, oh, God. May you strengthen them, oh, Lord, my Father, in this morning, Lord, that we can believe, Lord, that indeed you really exist, oh, Father. You are the only God there is, and there is none like you. When I talk about it, Someone that says, Toba, a pamguaco, a psen in jetito, Sizagu and Gossiam, Sine Temba, Tito, a two, Lobos out to Kumi, Sengo, says on his yose, two, ete, ete, kumgani, Usom Meles, a chico, the city class, Shial and Naomo and Amanda, Sipume, Tito, Sizi, Van Gossi, Sisi, Vumli, Lotan, Lakas, and his young Z, two more in Wale, Gobo and a chico, a two, Nuele, Kumgani, Sibula, Lutan, Lako, a chico, to us, Fuga, Mangalo, Somanda, Sends a chico, Sipini, Seg, and we will praise you, Lord. We will worship you. Give all the glory to you. For you deserve all the glory, mighty God. In this day, my Father, that you have given us, Lord, to just to worship you, Lord. We give all thanks unto you. We ask all these things, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, my dear Lord, Father, Amen. I would like to welcome each and every one again in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
This is the house of the Lord where you come and worship him. Hallelujah. Feel free to worship him. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and worship him. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's sing this song. Som landela, som landela, o Jesus. Hallelujah. Som landela, 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 som som landela, 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 Hallelujah. I will follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Wherever he go. Hallelujah. Amen. Wandi tatala na ewa Ewandi tatala ewa Ewandi pekale u Yesu Yesu Unobu be Ewandi tatala Hey, one, hey, one, 
Hallelujah. One did Tatalana, one did Begale. Hallelujah. He fought me, he saw a name. He buried me, be Dabu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With my shallow fat, you can take your seat. You can get to Lotalona Boche as we take that an offering. Hallelujah. My soul say yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, this morning uh, we have a three item. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Nia and Nia. Amen. Hallelujah. They can come forward. Hallelujah. On spray said Barina. Hallelujah. Spray said Barina. Space Parina Fandi Laste Fan me artes Vejerol God bless you, Simon. Before we're gonna sing, I just wanna talk about my grandmother. My grandmother was a beautiful woman. She always shined in my life. She always say, you know, you guys are very privileged to have me. And I say, yes, Oma, of course. And I just want to say thank you, believers, for taking my grandmother as your own mother. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bless you, believers. Uh, I also want to speak about my Oma. This song that we're going to sing um, is about roses. Roses will bloom again. My Oma was really a rose that bloomed always. Even when she was hard so hurt, she always bloomed. She always taught us what to do right for. She always taught us how to be strong girls. I always love her. And this song is also for my Opa to give my OP strength and peace in his heart. I 
I planted a little rose bush. I tended it with care. Its buds began to blossom. A sweet fragrance filled the air. But when winter came, it weathered. The petals dropped and fell the ground. My heart sang as I faded. But I've forgotten who had made it. And he said, roses will bloom again. Just wait and see. Don't mourn what have might have been. Only God knows what and when that roses will bloom again. Only sweetheart, a loving wife of forty years, cherished every day they had to help the memories deep. He never dreamed too low to love and go home to love alone. But he laid his rose to rest. He looked to heaven and tried his best to believe that roses will bloom again. Just wait and see. Don't mourn what have might have been. Only God knows what and when that roses will bloom again a precious rose of sharon broken and bruised and cruel as a shade standard oars of calvary so then might be saved oh satan cheered as he died while Mary and the others cried. But God rose him up from that sleep and kept a promise only he could keep to believe that roses will bloom again. Just wait and see. Don't mourn what it might have been. Only God knows what and when. Roses will bloom again. Roses will bloom again. Hallelujah. Roses will bloom again. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Zandi, and then after him, uh, Sister uh, Brother Nayland and the believers. Sisters and dear, hallelujah. We do much on the father, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, na lo, oh, na lo, e tuba, uta, tuba lo, uta, naza.
Unser Vater, unser Vater, Vater in die Himmel Amen, Halleluja. Amen.
Hallelujah. I bless your name. Hallelujah. We thank God for the item this morning. May the Lord Jesus bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us all stand on our feet as we welcome uh, Brother Dan in front. Hallelujah. I love you. I love him. I love him. She is sick and she's not doing fine. This is her second week. She's not doing alright. Let's remember her in prayers. Our dear Oma Josephine. She's not doing fine. Let's remember her in prayers. If there's any sick in our midst, signify by raising your hand. He is more than able. to come to the front and commit this prayer request to the Lord. Because, 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 because he, he fell love me and he purchased and he paid
Und da darf man auch schon mal eine Schüssel feste. Mit dem Arsch die Lände in Tor, Lord die Malle Phase. Mit dem Abu Bilim Bato. Aber in alle Phase, Abu Bamo und Halu Gile Appetite. Mit dem Arsch Jesus Christus, Abu Bamo da haben wir total auch Humamel, auch Sebelete. Ata Pele hui Agatatu ya Hau, mit dem Abu Gile. Empaka Shikule na mit dem Abu Regara Trokozi, Regara Matata. Regara disiki, regara sebi, regara maswenye, mutima ka matla. Rea ulebo wa usen huna leza zile ka sheko. Rea ulebo ka mwenye ta ori na ile ngona uro, usari na ilebo pelo. Uro kopanze, usen huna wa leza zile ka sheko. Mutima ka matla oshe, ki koko beza huwe na usen huna. Kia rape la, kia kopa, mutima ka leka di shosa bae na te ina me ngona juale. Kena di di shoko, mre na jeso kreste. Ruko pare swarele, di sito tarone di betarone muti maka ore sha choka madia ha muti maka lo kileng ushaki se di pelu tarone me ya rone mo rena Jesu Kriste ushaki se me na hanu ya rone ushaki se me shabo ya rone ushaki se me na hanu ya rone ushaki se butu barone kaka karezo milo me ya rone malime arone muti maka di sila rena hana ham pe muti maka lo kileng. Rishaba ham pemre na Jesu, rishoka ushaki sa useunhona, hore butemba hobi tlo botsebo bona ha, lamre na hararu na mre na Jesu Kriste, hona didi ku pa muti maka matla, o mama mashapa sisa so so viliena, mahole ba kula mre na Jesu Kriste, ndate kia rape la kadi biso la mre na Jesu, kiko pa ba fadi sa muti maka matla, kiko pa ba swere la ba city lo, o ba lukule ma lutinga o ba swere Kere kia makasha na le matemo na disiki kia tama kadi biso la mare na Jesu Kriste kia lele kia laskoti nsa di hele kira pela podi sobe kia nsa bona milia bona ilukuluwe tu tu juangho no habona kali biso la mare na Jesu Kriste ndate kiko pa uke na uba no mudimu ya kuna uba hoshe kiko pa jalo uba alafe tu atafule nyaha mare na Jesu Kriste ndate kia urape la uru Uye tele sevele zoe na pili Ushana lo faze li nzula hao Ushana lo faze mreri Kitla mame yoshe Esiti san sevele zoe na Kalibizo la mre na jeso kreste Ki idye la skoti nsa di hele Hwana juale Kalibizo la mre na jeso Buwa kamulo mwoto sebe disa Mruto tamo sebe disa Kalibizo la mre na jeso Huri yemu lemo mutimaka mata Ato mwona arabezi Yemu nga ato mwona mutimaka Aba uboni mutimaka usenwile Bopilomba hai Kalibizo la mrena jeso Mutimaka Riyalibu wa usenguna Liza zile kasheko Kilibu wa kazo osha mrena jeso kreste Honela zo osha retori So libizo la hao Kalibizo le mata la mrena jeso kreste Amen Hallelujah Amen Let's give God a hand of praise Hallelujah Amen For him alone is worthy Hallelujah I greet you, saints, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe you are happy to be found in the house of the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Maybe you're feeling a back pain. Maybe arthritis is coming to trouble you again. Or that stomach trouble is coming your way. Just forget about it this morning. And focus on him. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Nothing, nothing will separate us and distract us this morning from hearing from the Lord. Amen. You may take the comfort of your seat. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Wonderful Jesus. We would like to thank the, the believers Amen. for the wonderful song testimonies. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Nina and Nia. Beautiful. Amen. And uh, what shall we say? Regarding to the tree, to the choir which was here. Amen. My Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. It's all in us. You realize the potential is within us. Just for us to let God use us. And you realize how wonderful it is. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. We would like to welcome visitors in our midst. We have our dear brother Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Bless you, my brother. He's from Cape Town. 
And uh, we have got our sister Remunek. Hallelujah. Feel, feel free in the house of the Lord. Amen. We have nothing against you saying amen. If you feel like jumping up and praising the Lord, we Lord. still believe in that too. Amen. amen. Glory be to God. Amen. To God be the glory for great things he has done. Amen. Sister, grateful. She has a thankful heart. Amen. It's a birthday today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, my sister. It's our prayer and our desire that uh, God will keep you health, protect you, and you go stronger in Him from day to day. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, it is a blessing today to give our pastor in our midst. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a uh, it is, it is good to have you, Pastor. Amen. We will, we will get a comfortable chair for him. Yeah, we, we will do that. Okay. So that he can sit comfortably. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It means good to have him around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, 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 you feel encouraged. You feel strengthened. Amen. You, you feel protected. Amen. When you've got in, our elder in our midst, our pastor, let's continue praying for him that God can totally heal him. The devil is attacking him with some uh, lung infection. And Let's continue remembering him in prayers. Will we do that since? Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Would like to remind the believers about the Thanksgiving services, which are coming on the 5th and 6th of December. Are you excited for the meeting? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. We are under expectation for a wonderful time. Amen. Amen. So we will be talking to the believers so that we can see where we can get accommodation from. Amen. We will do that from after service today. Those who can accommodate one or two believers. Those who can say, I can accommodate a family. I mean, just talk to the Dickens. Talk to Brother Standiwe. Talk to Bruden Matie. And give your names. Maybe you are a single. And you say, I can take single brothers. Or I can take single sisters. Just give your name and how many believers you can take. So that when we get the list from Postmas Bay and Build Fontaine, we will know how to allocate them for accommodation. God richly bless you for that. Amen. And uh, we're excited today. And um, as you know, we will be serving lunch after the service. So we are not in a hurry. We are, we are, we are not in a hurry. Food will not tell us you are in a hurry. Because that problem is solved already. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. So that part is covered. And if the enemy tries to tell you you are yeah. getting hungry, tell him the sisters have cooked. And the food is ready. So there is no hurry. Amen. Amen. And we are so excited today to have our dear Pastor Nikki and his wife, Sister Ebenezer, in our midst. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, they did not come alone. They came with, their, with, with the, they call him junior pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And the young sister Joy. Amen. Glory be to God. And um, they were celebrating their 21st anniversary. This past week. 21 years. 21 years. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we are thankful for that. And um, so we will have those celebrations after the church. So don't worry about the cake. It's meant for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? Wonderful. Amen. Before we go to the wedding, another vote of thanks. Another vote of thanks. Vote of thanks. We want to thank Brother Edward. Yes. He is living today. We welcomed him last Sunday. And he has been doing a beautiful job. And now that the job is done, he has no reason in the business around Bloomfontein. Anymore. And uh, he is believing this uh, late today, yeah. back to Middleback. Let's remember him in prayers. We are thankful. We appreciate the job we have done, men of God. It has been a blessing to have you around. Take our greetings in regards to the church in Middleburg. Continue praying for us. We will be praying for you. God richly bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We bring you greetings from the church in Postmas Beck. Amen. Uh, they said um, we must pass their regards to the church. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for the word? Brother Brenham says, expectation is a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you will always get what you expect. If you are under a blessing, you receive a blessing and expecting a blessing this morning. You will surely be blessed. If you are here with a question and you want an answer to your question, you will receive that answer this morning. Maybe you came sick this morning and you want healing this morning. You will live healed. You will get what you expect. God is not in a business of disappointing his children. He always gives you as you desire. He will give you as you ask. Amen. Amen. And as much as you pull from the men of God, so you shall receive. Remove him from his notes. Remove him from his scripture. Pour the inspiration to your needs. And say, pass me not, O gentle Savior. We know he has studied. We know he has put some notes down. But I have a special need this morning. So speak to me, my Lord. Speak to me, my Lord. Are you under expectation? Are you under expectation? Are you ready for the word of God? Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Is that your prayer? Let us stand on our feet. Let us stand on our feet. Hallelujah. Every day. Faithful, you are faithful. Every day, every day, oh, and every hour. Let's raise our hands to Him. He's a faithful God. this morning in every hour you are faithful you are faithful you are God bless you pastor amen oh, every day every day
every day, hallelujah, one more time. Every day and every hour. Father, great is thy faithfulness. Lord, not one time have we seen you fail. You have been on the spot every time. Lord Jesus, we have seen you by the power of the resurrection. We have seen you coming. Lord, when all hopes were gone, we, we have seen you on the scene. Father, when all hopes were gone, Lord, and Lazarus been buried, Father, people are going back to their different homes as they, they walked in the Bible days, they were walking, oh God. And they have, Lord, some of them family members with pain and unanswered questions. And while walking, Jesus was also walking back towards the village where Lazarus lived. And Father, Lord, we are so grateful that you are still the resurrection. And Father, that you are still here this morning to resurrect whatever situation there is. And Father, we want to dedicate the service to you. And Father, we want to commit the word the reading of your word, Lord, and everything that will be said here today, be it, be it to you, and Lord, as you receive the glory and the honor this morning. Thank you for this privilege. Everyone that has come in here today, Lord, we differ with needs, we differ with our desires, but Father, we are so grateful that you are here and that we can put all that into the hands of the Almighty God. Knowing, O oh God, by faith, Lord, all things are possible. By a donkey, Yere, that alles is moontlik for Allah wat gloed. Help us to take you once again at your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, let us take our seats for a moment. We want to welcome you once again in the precious name of our Lord. Indeed, it's, a, it's an honor to be here. It's to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. We are so grateful for what the Lord has been doing. Amen. All the glory and the honor belongs to the Lord. Amen. And we are so grateful. Amen. Amen. For the work that he has been doing, amen, in our lives. For the work that the Lord has been doing in our lives. We can just thank the Lord for the work that he has started. Amen. 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 It's a work that he has started. Amen. Amen. He promised that the work that he started, he oh, will finish out that work. Amen. 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 And, Amen. And whatever he promised, he will fulfill that promise. You don't have to panic. None of us have to stress. Amen. Brother Francis, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Amen. Amen. But let me tell you this morning, the longer you wait, the greater is the blessing. Amen. Amen. The more you appreciate, unless you know poverty, you will not appreciate when God bless you. Amen. You Amen. have to go through all those, you know, difficult times to appreciate the Lord when God changed your situation. Amen. Amen. You stay in the Makuku. 
And then from a mukuku to a double story house. Oh mukuku into a pami. You have to start with the mukuku. O santo kare mukuku. Amen. Amen. Young girl, if the brother promised you a double story, how to be strong in your home? From the start, how to carry home? Walk away from him. Tamale tukolien. Walk away from that young man. Tamale tukolien. Don't listen to his stories. Simo mamele di palita hajosi. Amen. Amen. Little beginnings is what is important. I rather start down there than to start there and fall from there down there. I rather grow gradually, slowly. Amen. Amen. And allow God to grow with me. Amen. And to grow in the grace of God. Not to do my own thing. And as you grow, you also see the power of God. You also see how God can take you from down there. Gradually take you up there. Don't reach for big things. Hallelujah, but rich for the experience as you grow gradually while God is adding. Amen. Amen. But don't reach for the big things because you have to explain a lot when, when, you, when you were about these big things. But when you grow gradually, it's easy for people to understand when they see you driving a, a Mercedes compressor when you have started with a, 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 a little Datsun Bucky you know, you've been pushed Pushed. Amen. Bonnet is open. Oils on the hands. And from the little Datsun. That gives a little Toyota. And then God is gradually. So when God is blessing you. With a Mercedes compressor. Mercedes compressor. People can understand. But what out this is? I say no. This brother. This family. They deserve this good car. Because we know the days. When this family have struggled. But they have remained faithful. Faithful. But in the struggling, they have stayed faithful. They have prayed. And during the struggle days, they have not forgotten to pay the tithing, to support the missionaries, to support the widows, to support the poor. They have nothing, but yet they supported the kingdom of God. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Allow God to gradually bless you. Amen. Amen. We also welcome the, the invisible audience. Are we online, brothers? Are we, are we online? Amen. 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 So we also welcome those believers that are streaming in this morning. Just bear with us today. It's English, it's Africans. It's true to this time. This time. Just bear with us wherever, wherever you are streaming, streaming from. Amen. Amen. God bless you out there. We love you and we appreciate you. 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 We love you and your pastor. Amen. Amen. We are very happy to see him. We miss mommy a lot. It takes some time. This morning we went to the graveside. Me and my wife. We spent some minutes there. We had a tremendous time. We will definitely miss her a lot. And forgive us if we, we, if we talk about her. But she, she has been a mother. She has been a grandmother. She was a, a wife. And she became a mother. She became a grandmother. And she became the mother of the body of Christ. And she was everything. Amen. I don't know in the army, Brother Francis, such a person, what rank do you give such a person? Is there, is there, is there enough stripes 
such a person, I don't know. But, but the value then the 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 the, 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 the her life. Amen. Made Amen. a very big uh, big impact upon the life of the people. And we will truly miss her. Amen. We feel her every day with us. Amen. We are so grateful for the Lord. For all your support. Globally. As well as locally in our country. Even the local church. If there's anything that you need to do. Amen. Do it for your pastor. Amen. Amen. You want to do something for mom, do it for your pastor. God has kept him. He survived the accident. We don't know how. We cannot explain that. But we are happy that he is still around. And we don't know how long. Maybe after the first 10 meetings, God takes him. We don't know. So we just thankful for the few days or the few years that God will keep him with us. Amen. We, we, know how to do the best. we know how to do it. Amen. 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 We are happy this morning. Thank you for your support. Amen. As our brother was saying, 21 years in marriage. Amen. It's a grace of God. Amen. Amen. We had many young people in the same year that, that got married. married. And so, most of those marriages are gone. Because they were based on money, on popularity, on big cars, big jobs. You know, there were many other young girls 21 years ago that were interested in me, Brother Nikki. But I was too uneducated. I had no education. I couldn't write properly. I wasn't able to read properly. I didn't have a job. I had nothing. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a job. The only thing I know was winning souls for the Lord. But God sent Sister Ebony is my way. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So young girls, you that are studying, I feel sorry for you. Amen. For Amen. you that are in the university, I feel sorry for you. I know you say, Brother Nikki, I have to have some degree behind me. But I would prefer that you would rather have an apron before you. Then, then a degree. I will prefer for you to have an apron. Amen. Amen. I know you want to have a good job. Yes, you want to have a good Amen. job. You want to have a big house. You want to be self-supportive. But it, be, it will become more difficult for you. Unless God do something in your heart. Amen. To be obedient towards your husband. Amen. Because Amen. if he doesn't have a degree, has a degree maybe he just have a, 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 a grade 12. Or maybe like Nikki, a grade 5 or grade 6. You know, I feel hey, sorry Latino. for you. Hey, because uh, he might approach you. And, and I think the Lobola will be so much. Uh, and the brother with the Holy Ghost will not be able to marry you. And then the brother without the Holy Ghost he will have five degrees. He will have a BMW. Oh, sorry, if you have a, sorry, if you have a BMW. Sorry, if you have a BMW. You see, whatever you have, you know, you might make the wrong decision because you, your, your eyes is focused on the natural things. Our, uh, uh, my prayer is if the Lord gives us enough time and my daughter get, get married one day. You know, if a brother comes to, to joy, may God help joy. me that that young girl be oh. having the Holy Ghost. When the young boy stands in front of her, no matter who he is, if you have a car or not, if he has a degree or not, or you have a house or not, but she must have enough Holy Ghost in her to be able to discern the brother. Amen. Amen. 
That she is able to discern the brother. That's what our young girls need. It's a spirit of discernment. Because some of these young boys, they just come and, 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 and they just promise a lot of things. I had nothing to promise my wife. 21 years ago. Amen. I had no money. I still remember when we got married. The brother that was our one of our uh, best men. You know, uh, he dropped us in Bloemfontein. And he gave us 120 rand. We had no money. We started with money that somebody gave us. So, so, so that is the beginnings. Um, it doesn't help you start with uh, 500,000 500, million rand in your bank account. The million, uh, the bank Amen. account. There's Amen. no joy. There's no Holy Ghost. There's no Christ in your house. You know how, 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 how cold a big house can become? If there's no love in that house. I'd rather love in a mokuku than in a big house. Because uh, imagine you have a double story. You are, you, 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 you are downstairs and he's upstairs. And you don't communicate. You just Amen. WhatsApp one another. WhatsApp How cold is that house? E, 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 I'd rather be in a mukuku. You don't have to WhatsApp. E, di WhatsApp because o. you can see one another. Yes, you e. can see one another. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. May God bless our young people. Amen. Amen. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with education. It makes life a little bit easier. But it comes with responsibility. It comes with responsibility. It's good to have education. As I said, young girls, it's good to have education. But remember, it can take you further away from the Lord. It takes you away from the Lord. And it might cause you to miss your husband. That God-given husband that does not have education. It took us a long time. I told the brothers yesterday it took my wife 17 years in marriage to have her own kitchen, to have her own zinc. And even today, we fight with that home because we still use the baskets while the zinc is there. You see? So young girl, think twice. Find the purpose of God in your life. Before you register for the university. Ask God first. Let him give you a direct answer. Let him give you a good answer. Don't take any decision without asking God to lead you into that decision. Because you might make a decision based on emotions, based on on feelings based on what somebody has told you based on what you think is best for you but not based on what God has directed you into there is too many examples around us not just in our country but all over the world there is too many examples of young people marriages because of young people that took decisions without praying, without consulting with God first. Praise the name of the Lord. May God help our young people today. Amen. Amen. It was the grace of God that we, as me, as a, as a, that me and my wife, 21 years, it might sound little. But 21 years in it is not easy. Amen. Amen. Then you ask yourself, how, how, how is 50 years in marriage? 30 years. Five young people today, they are married two years, then you ask the, the sister, sister, you find the prayer request on the, in church. Uh, church, please pray for my husband. They are just two years married. Church, please pray for my wife. They are still on honeymoon. What is the prayer request doing in church? 
You see? Hey, May God help us this morning. May God bless my wife. That I have stood so faithful. For all these years. Amen. 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 Just turn to your neighbor and ask him, did you position yourself? Have you positioned yourself? For a breakthrough. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. God help us this morning. I hope you have your pens, your books, a little paper. There's a lot of scriptures. We will not, we will not go through all this, but you go home and study those scriptures. But then, the, 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 then before you step off this morning, you mentioned what Brother Brennan, the prophet of God, mentioned about the expectation. And my title this morning is Expectation. Tibello. As <laughs> Tibello. Expectation Tibello. as you draw closer to his presence. Amen. Amen. Expectation Tibello. as you draw closer to his presence. The woman Mosadi. going to Simon's house, she could not get to him unless there was an expectation. Don't be empty. When you enter the presence of God, we have to do it with great expectation. You must go with a, with a, with a spirit of expectation. With an approach of expectation. When you come into the presence of the Lord. Don't just come because it's a common, you know, common do. Amen. But, Amen. but it should be with great expectation. It's like a fisherman. If he go fishing, he cannot do all the, 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 the arrangements. Buying bait, Getting his fishing rods ready. Putting fuel in the car. Drive all the way to the dam. And go there and have no expectation. He's going there. He's expecting the fish to bite. Imagine you go fishing. Without any expectation. Can we say expectation? Can somebody say expectation? Imagine you come to church and there's no expectation. You go out here empty. You will get quickly disappointed. You will get quickly bored. You will quickly get tired because there's no expectation. But your expectation. Amen. Raise Amen. your faith. You never permit that to me. It raise your expectation. Your attitude. You never know how. Amen. It raise your expectation. You never permit that to me. For a miracle. Back in some soul. If there's no expectation, you might say, hey, I wish the brother can finish quickly today. Because I have another appointment to do. You might leave the church and this might be your last time. We will ever see you again. Amen. Amen. Expectation as we approach his presence. What a lesson this morning. Matthew chapter chapter 15. That's just the one scripture. And I'll give you a lot of scriptures. And uh, you can also, you know, uh, download the, the, the service of today. If you miss some of these scriptures, and okay, you can, you can uh, 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 listen to it again. Matthew chapter 15 verse 32. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat and I will not send them away fasting 
lest they faint in the way. Ya ba Jesu o bitsa ba go tua ba hai are ke o tlwile ke o tlwela bongata bo bohloko o bane matsatsi a se a le magago ba dutse honna mme ha bana le tho le o ba le jang ke sitwa go ba khutlisa le tlala amen Father as we ask your blessings upon your word it's been blessed Lord it is already been blessed it is anointed and Father we just want to go quickly uh, saying a few things and as we are in your presence today we just father are so blessed we are so grateful to be in your presence this morning bless your word oh god bless your children here bless those that are streaming in father whatever we need lord help us to come with great expectation groot verwachting here so that ons kan ontvang uit die hand uit die in die naam van jesus amen you may take your seats ditulo hadinkwe moina I will read very quickly. I have so much to say. We have been, we have been dealing with this subject for the last few weeks. Last, yeah, let's say two weeks almost. And we just like to uh, just continue with this subject. Drawing as we are drawing closer into his presence. Amen. Amen. Very important today, brothers and sisters. Amen. 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 As we say, expectation. Coming with expectation as we are drawing closer to his presence. What made this people in the book of Matthew chapter 15 what let them stay for so long in the presence of the Lord? Amen. What Amen. made them to wait and tarry for so many days? You know, sometimes we are we are in such a hurry when it comes to the things of the Lord. And what made these people to wait and to remain for three days with the Messiah? Of course, there had to be something. There had to be something. They couldn't just remain the Bible says in the, in the closing verses of Matthew chapter 15, Amen, they, amen. Were, they were about, Amen, five or 4,000 men. 4,000 men. And there is without the wives and without the children. 4,000 men. 4,000 men. Amen. Besides the women and the children. Imagine. Hopula. Where did all those people found accommodation? Where did they rest? Because after the service, there's about, let's say, 4,000 men. And, 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 and let's say 2,000 of these men were married men. So that means you have 6,000, you have 4,000, 2,000 men, 2,000 wives. And let's say if each of those families had two children. It's a lot of people. You can imagine the children. How, you know how children is. It's difficult to control some of these children. Some. But imagine, let's say 3,000 children. Where, where, where did everybody sleep? Did they have enough tents? Did they have enough food for those three days? Did they have enough resources? Did they have enough water for those three days? Did they have enough blankets? Did it rain during the course of those three days? What was the condition? But the Bible says they remained for three days. So if they were able to, to, to be able to remain so that means there was Something about Jesus. There was something about this presence. Oh my. Hey. So, the hurry that we have 
I don't know where it comes from. If the minister goes one hour, you notice people will now. Some will they like to stand there watching. Make like this. Everybody must see now. He's watching his time now. Then you ask yourself the question. If it was in you, if you would love in those days, how pillar matatsing out? Would you be able to remain for three days? I don't know where the hurry comes from. That we are so in a hurry. It's almost there. It's almost the feeling that there is no expectation. We've got so much that we are doing outside. You know, then we almost, we just have a little time to be in the presence of the Lord. I really want to go quickly on this. But I want to say that again. There, there had to be something about Jesus. There had to be something. And that made him to remain for, for three days. And, 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 and the disciples Wanted to send them home. And Jesus, he knew that some of these people, they've been here for three days. And they did not have a meal. Can you imagine? Food was not important for them. Food was not important for them. Coming in the presence of God cuts off the desires of the world to be in the presence of the Almighty God. You forget about yourself. You forget about all the trouble. All the debts you have to pay. You can imagine if you can remain in his presence every day, the things of this world will seem nothing. You know why we are so worried about tomorrow? It's because we spend too little time in his presence. Why are we are worried about next week? Because we spend too little time in the presence of God. The longer we stay, the longer we remain in the presence of God, the less time we worry about the affairs of this world. The less time we spend in the worries of tomorrow. Is that true, brother Poppy? The more time we spend in his presence, the less we think about tomorrow, the less we think about the troubles of yesterday. We will have more, less people. We will have less people suffering with depression if we can spend more time in his presence. Because depression is caused because of you thinking too much. You are asking too much questions. You are wondering too much. And it causes you to stress. It causes you to, to worry. Eventually, you have, to, you have to be treated because of depression. Because I want to ask you this morning. Have you positioned yourself? Have you positioned yourself for that miracle or that breakthrough that you are waiting for? You have prayed. You have fasted. You have taken time. You have done everything you could in your uh, capability. But the, the, the question this morning is, is the question you ask yourself. I have prayed. I have done this. But the next question is for yourself have I positioned myself? You have to position yourself to receive that breakthrough.
Amen. Alleluia. We have to ask ourselves if we have positioned ourselves. To, 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 you know, it's like it's, it's like in sports, soccer. It's trying to lead the proper ball. You cannot score a goal. Okay, you are, are, are unless you are in the ball. position to score the goal. When I was a piece of hand, it's not ball. everybody. That that can they can score a goal. But a goal. You must be in the right position. You must be there at the right time. You, you must, must be trained. Because everybody can kick a ball. But you need ball. a proper striker. You know, to, 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 to create that curve on his boot. You know, sometimes you look, the ball will pass the, 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 the poles. But it will curve back into the ball. You have to positionally place. You have to be positionally placed. You cannot just shoot from any place. You have to be positionally placed. Amen. You find many soccer players. They are right in front of the goalie. Back up, Brother, oh, he, at that, that time you just tried. Me the ball goes that way. Eh, hey, the ball goes over the post. Ball in Pamela. The ball. Hey. What? Wait, wait. He should have passed the ball to the striker. Behind the rain. Amen. I want you to say something. Give us a work and tumble. Amen, church. Hey, I can read. That's why I ask you. Take out your brother. Ask your brother next to you. How we position? positioned. You are not like a piece of two letters alone. Remember that your blessing will not fall into your lap while you are sitting and you do nothing. You find many people, they pray, they cry, they cry, they pray, and then they go sit. And then they expect that the breakthrough must fall on their laps. You will wait there for one year, two years, five years, ten years. You have to stand up, you have to rise up. Your breakthrough will not fall from somewhere. You have to do something. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Find many people they want to sit and do nothing. Hey. It's like farming. Everybody likes the pullers. When, when they are there. But ask the brother to take the spit and then to, to. Hey brother, you know my back, the doctor. Hey. Told me, the doctor told me that uh, you know, because of that injury, I will not be able to pick up a spit. No. But the same brother, he likes his pumpkin in the plate. He likes the cabbage in the plate. But he will tell you, the doctor told me, brother, because of that injury, where's the God of, where's the healer? Where is the God of Elijah? If you are complaining about the injury, that was caused because of your work outside of the word. Your breakthrough, your miracle, there's a scripture we will take in the book of Ruth. We're going to read about a woman called Naomi. Naomi. She came from a strange land. She was married. Her mother-in-law was married. They were all at white husbands. And all of a sudden, everybody died. In those days, the woman expected the, the woman, amen, the husbands, was the breadwinners. And the woman were at home. 
And those Bible women, they, they always relied upon the husbands. Come on, brothers. Amen, Amen brothers. brothers. I want the Amos from the brothers. Don't let your wife study because you are lazy. Don't, don't, don't wait for an educated young girl. In the Bible days, the woman relied on the husbands. And the days of the Bible is back. Amen. Those who they had, their husbands were the kingsmen. Amen. Their husbands were the kingsmen. What is your husband to you? Sometimes our sisters get so tired. They don't even put some lunch in anymore. They don't even put a flask of coffee in then. Huh? Sisters, we get so spoiled sometimes. Your husband have a good position at work. You tell him, no, there is, J there is Jacob's in your office. There is, there is, there is a Nescafe in your office. So why should I make a flask? Do you know your coffee? Even if it's real coffee, even if it's not even Jacob's, sister, just because you have made that coffee, it, is, it tastes better than the Jacob's in the office. Glory! Amen. Your sandwich. If it's even, even if it's peanut butter and jam, it tastes better than the chicken and mayo sandwich that your husband buys at the cafeteria in his office. Amen. Remember young sister. Remember married sister. If you stop making lunch for your husband, there's another woman in his office that's going to bring a sandwich for you. Amen. There will be another, another woman that will bring a nice sandwich to work for you. And once your husband has tasted the first sandwich, once your husband has tasted the first sandwich, I'm leaving today so the pastor can sort out. But the pastor is not allowed to preach for the next few months. So I don't know the deacon will sort everything out here Amen. There's trouble in many of our homes today because we have neglected our duties as mothers, as fathers. Young girls, I rather get married to a man that loves me than than somebody that will enjoy the sandwiches of another girl. Let's go quickly. You just write down. We have to position ourselves in order to receive. There's quite a number of examples. Abraham, Abraham Genesis 12, 1. He could not become the father of many nations unless Abraham had to go to Canaan. He had to wait there, position himself so that God could speak to Abraham. Luke 19 verse 1. Zacchaeus. He was not able to see Jesus unless Zacchaeus had to shake off all pride. All pride. He was a renowned businessman. But he, he longed to see Jesus. But he could not see Jesus because he was short in stature. And he had to shake off. Shake off all pride. And climb in a tree and become a Fool. 
to see Jesus, Jesus, you have to become nothing. Or try to believe. I could imagine. In Jericho, how the people looked at him. But when come see it. Hey, come see it. Hey, what is Zacchaeus doing here? Hey, there is a recognized businessman. Hey, it's a man with money. But his, his, his actions is so. What is he doing? Hey, is he getting crazy because of all his money? Because we, 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 I, I, you know, people say, I, I stood here and I watched him for the last 10 minutes. Is from the one tree, he was watching there. And then he moved to the other tree. He, he was looking for a place to put his feet on. And it's quite something to watch somebody that's, that's always around the tree. Hey, you you might ask yourself, ask yourself brother Francis, what, what is wrong with, Francis with his brother? He's from the one tree to the next tree. Maybe, Maybe the brother, brother something is wrong there. there. And you feel sorry for the brother because, because of his situation. No, the brother is trying to find a place. The brother, sometimes people look at you. But you look so crazy because you do Sometimes you do things and people don't understand. You know what? What's it? Let's surprise them today. You are trying to find your position. You are trying to position yourself because the gears heard that Jesus is passing and he must get on top of a tree. Let me say this to you this morning and to our invisible audience. Find a place. Position yourself. Because Jesus Christ is passing by. You're going to miss him. If you don't position yourself. Blind Bartimaeus. He was a blind beggar. Jesus. Jesus. I heard that Brother Daniel said we have enough time today. The sister cooked. The cake is there. Everything is organized. So we'll take another 10 15 minutes. But Mies. Bartimaeus, he positioned him right in the main road. Where have you positioned yourself? Where now we copy this guy now? Amen. In the main road. Where have you will not find a beggar. In the back streets. You will find him where there's movement. Where have you positioned yourself? Where now we took his Peter. Luke 5. Luke Ebuilu. You could not have that heavy load of fish unless Peter positioned himself. Matthew chapter 14, 27. Matthew Ebuilu. Before Peter could walk on the water, he had to position himself. The woman with the blood issue, Matthew 920. The woman with the blood issue. She had to position herself. I copies, I took it. Remember, there was a lot of other people around her. A lot of other people around Jesus. They were not, they were not, they, 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 they were just there. But there was one woman. She believed. She said, I have to position myself. Where, where, where did she find the place? Touching the hem of his garment. Right at his feet. Sometimes we say, I want to see eye to eye with Jesus. No, sir. Find him at his feet. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus 
before he could save us bila arpuluka oh you say brother is it eh, only us muina ake kuna fela is it only us ake kuna fela that needs to position ourselves so that we can come to his presence oh richo but mbai he himself eh po po yena mbai jesus christ so christ ake kuna position himself oh so that he could save us so that he could redeem us where was his place yena tulene le town on gogota He was positioned at Calvary. He was nailed to the cross. Amen. What are we trying to say this morning that your blessings and your breakthrough cannot come you standing. How do you know You have to do something. we will just get quickly to that kale pota pota getla ba mo people are sometimes too scared but who but who to come too close ho ba haufi because if you come closer to light o bona ha o atumela ganya it starts to reveal e kala e bontsatsa like the soldiers jwele ka masolo in the army hona le botho la sol they have something that they shoot in the air hona le nthwe ba ithunya hona se paka pakeng me e sa ganya e kholo me ba bona di ga ke oh there's the enemy e se ga ke sana you see la bo you see sometimes people but wa ba 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 they are afraid to get too close but swa o ba haufi to the presence of god ba ke sa botem ba mudi because as you draw close o bana how can el a lot of things get revealed din tho tsenga ta di a sonoleha Let's just deal with a few rewards of drawing closer to his presence. Hare di hare se betsane le dimpho tse ni wemba. A few rewards. Di neo tse ni wemba. As we draw closer to him. Hantse mo atume. Psalms. Buka ke di pesali. Draw what what does what what does he do? Wait and now. When we draw closer to him. Hare atume la buka insa. We draw away from the world. Rona ri twa le fatse. If we go closer to him. Hare ke na ho ye. The world gets away from us. Le fatse lona la twa ho. You are struggling to get the world out of you. O sukola o kwa o because you are too close to the world and you are further away from his presence me wena o ho le closer you come to him how fine na o pana le further the world becomes le fasi le suit away it enables us to know god better ho ho o na se be mutimo hanya come closer to him o mo atume those are the benefits a dinner we don't going to go into it who o na ho o fuma na Those are the benefits. So can you know if you come closer to him. When you position yourself. How it took is a tool. Able to us to know God better. Me reta eta musiru mo chef 73 verse 2. Di pesala mo ke builwe. What is that Psalms 25 14? Di pesala mo ke eo. Knowing the secrets of God. O tseba makunu tu amuti. Read Psalms 25 verse. Ha bali pu buka ke di pesala. You will understand why you have to draw closer to him. Reta o tlusisa o bane ke tshwantsela mo atume. Bible says is to is you are starting knowing the secrets of god bible ero o tla tsala o tseba makunutu amutsi philippians 4 verse 13 e buka ke ba philip strength mark drawing closer ho o mo atume you get strength o fumana mark you find many people say brother i'm so but wabanga tsaba brother i'm weak mwena nna ke khatsi how close are you from the lord wena o how few muti mo how close are you bo how few ba ho botswa are you more to the world wena o pila le fatsi or are you close to him kapo pila haina because the bible says in the book of bible of philippians 4 verse 13 kapo philip speak about the strength of god wa ka mata a mutimo psalms 128 verse 1 buka ke di pesali the blessings of god the tunnel for tutamuti say brother i'm not blessed eh muina ha ke tunnel for brother i'm not blessed ha ke tunnel for nna muina oh i'm so jealous brother eh mu na ke na lo it's like god is only blessing you eka o muti mo hlonofa it's only god blessing that family eka o hlonofa ka la malane psalms 100 and puka ke di pesalime there's a number of rewards hona le dineho tse fo anyone ba ke nsa ba thupo that is drawing closer to god ba a tumela mo gena Romans 12 verse 2 Buka ka Roma What does it do? Yet and now coming closer to his presence Ho atomela boteng ba It's aligning yourself to God's will for you, your life You look is a pakeng sa bophiro ba ha o modimo Brothers you do have you do you not have your own car Bwana lona bana ndiri kolowe If you 
do your own mechanical work. How you have to back in some mechanical work alone? He said, Pastor Nikki, I don't have money to go to the mechanic in town. Oh, how can I tell you that you are a mechanic? You take your car to a backdoor mechanic. On car mechanic, you come round. Or sometimes you open your own boot. Kapo eno bula booti ya how? And you give your own car a good service. Mu e we fasi bilit ink. You drive a few kilometers. Uti kilometers wa wa hana. Avoid that. Hana ho. If it's a if it's a, a Volkswagen, heile Volkswagen. There's Volkswagen in town. Hona le Volkswagen. If it's a Mercedes Benz, Mercedes Benz. Take it to Mercedes Benz. If it's a Mercedes Benz, if it's a BMW, heile BMW. Don't open the boot. Se bule boot. Because everything is is electronic. Papa ne tsho shake ke meke ke di thapo tsa mitlaka. Don't change the plugs. I don't know what gonna affect you. Don't try to change the oil. Did you only? Because some of these things, they have sensors. In the moment you remove it, how do you It confuses the, the the electronic box. Some of our cars, it needs to be pulled in. The, the mechanic comes. Oh, how mechanic? He has a laptop. On a laptop, he open your car. Oh, put a He plug it in. Why can't? And then he diagnoses where the problem is. But we me hona want to open our own boots. We are our own diagnosis. We we discover our own diagnosis. And that's why many of our cars. Me papa papa ngata di kolo itaro na. You have to use a taxi now because your car is at home. Chanta ke sebiri seri take so bani di kolo di malapi. Coming into the presence of God, it aligns the car. You look at the car. If you leave your steering wheel while you're driving, how to let the car go? The car is not supposed to go that way. Your car is not supposed to go left. If you leave your steering wheel, how to let the car is supposed to be straight? It's not to be to drive straight. It's not for me. And if your car, if you leave your steering wheel, how to let the river? And the car moves left. Me aya lele tihadi. Then you know. O chancho tibi. I need to take the car to the wheel alignment. Get chancho ki said the wheel alignment. It's time to align the wheels of my car. Chancho ki luki se mantai re akolo. And any car that is not aligned, koloi aise alai aise alai. You're losing your tires. It either cuts from the inside or it cuts from the outside. But you're losing the tires of your car. And if a Christian doesn't remain in the presence of God, if you realize that you are not aligned with the word anymore, then come for alignment. But then say we copy it, sir. Alignment day. But people are too scared. But what who? To come in the presence of God. For an alignment. Because if the Holy Ghost gets plucked in, how can you? Hey, hey. Brothers, turn the way. When I stand the way. If the Holy Ghost gets plucked in, how many you have to pluck up? And the Holy Ghost start to diagnose. Me or Kala or diagnose. Hey, hey. Picks up the first problem. Ain't about hard. The brother is smoking in secret. We na utuari secret. The brother has a girlfriend in secret. We na orali nyat. The sister is doing this in secret. Eh, mu 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 haiseri wu na. The brother is not paying his tithes. That's why he's cast. Ah, sapa chala bushume chika ho wasutuza lebo kuna ata. Amen. Nyat. We're talking about coming into the presence of God. Upu akabu kemba muti. Amen. He diagnose hey, what all the problems Matata in our lives. Oh my Jesus. Hey, Jesus Christ. I will skip a few things. Because I don't want to miss this. Poor Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. The presence of uh, Psalms chapter 90. One to ten. The presence of God reveals all our secret sins. All our secret wrongs. 
That's why we don't want to come for prayer. Because God might reveal the Holy Ghost is a very powerful diagnosis machine. And it's our desire this morning to be plugged in. When you come into the presence of God, that should be your desire. As you enter the doors, that should be our desire. Say, Lord, I want to be plugged in. And I want to be plucked out from the world outside. Forget about the world. Forget about everything outside. When you get into the presence of God, Say, Lord, I'm here now. Plug in. Diagnose. Reveal the secrets of my heart. Lord, if there be anything in my life, there is not scriptural. Lord, remove it. Fix it. Replace it. Take it out. Place a bread new. Restore the joy of my salvation. But if you go to a bad dorm again, it doesn't have a diagnosis machine. You will only see oil on his hands, a lot of oil. A lot of oil on his hands. A lot of oil on his shirt and his trousers. And you will see a lot of broken cars in his yard. Run away from those mechanics. We have the Holy Ghost. We have the Word. We have Christ. Christ. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Get plucked in. Get plucked in. Get plucked in. So that the Holy Ghost can diagnose every problem, every situation. You know what this backdoor mechanics does? I the backdoor is about mechanic. Edward, when you bring your car, how is it going? He takes another man's parts and put it in your car. And when you come, he tells you, just listen here. Oh, 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 that is nice. He took another starter and put it in your car. When, 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 you, when you, your car is there, he takes your parts and put it in another car. Amen. But the Holy Ghost, when he knows, on how to diagnose. And you find a problem. He removes it. Why he put a new one. That's the blessing. You say, my brother, I don't have money to take my car to the, to the, to the, to the dealers. So I can fix my problem. I will advise you. Position yourself to save money until you service your car. Put some money away. Buy less data. Buy less airtime. Buy less Kentucky. Buy less tears. Amen. Tell the family. Amen. The pastor spoke hard. And we can have a better uh, quality for our car. If we eat less Kentucky. Is that what you want? Are you listening to me? Are you listening Position yourself to eat less. Eat Munder. Eat less, Brother Simon. Mwena Simon. Oh. You know how much money we spend on food? Have you ever seen how expensive food is? Brother. If there ever was a time where food is expensive, it's now. You go into the shop, it's just a quart of a pumpkin. It's 25 rent. A full pumpkin, it's 70 rent. Food is expensive. So I will advise you to buy seed. And to put 12 seeds in the ground. Okay, yeah. oh, and you boom. multiply 12 with 2. With two. Oh, sorry. Okay, that gives you 25 pumpkins. Your fat said 25. 
And a packet of seed Maggie, the, the will cost you 25 rand. But you will have 24 pumpkins. What do you do, sister? You cut it up. You make some blocks. You put it in bags. You put it in a deep freeze. You have enough pumpkins for the next six months. Somebody come to your house. Listen, this pumpkin is nice. You will always hear people say, hey, it's been a long time since I eat some pumpkin. Then you say, brother, 12 seats. Well, what do you mean, brother, 12 seats? Brother, I use a spade. And I plant 12 seats. May God help us this morning. Right, it's half past 12. We're closing. The presence of God reveals the secrets of our sins. Psalms chapter 90 verse 1 to 10. The light of God's presence reveals the dark places. The dark places. The longer we spend in God's presence, oh, the more light shines, it highlights our sin. It reveals. And that is why so many people, they rather to struggle or remain in that condition. But they avoid the light of God. Because the longer when the doctors wants to check what's happening in the inside of the body, they have to take you to an X-ray machine. And the X-ray machine is an X-ray machine, machine of light. They cannot see because your body is dark. So they have to x-ray to see your lungs, to see your rib cage. And on the x-ray, they will be able to see okay, you broke three ribs. Your lungs it's halfway. Your kidneys. One is gone. You only have one kidney. What is that? It's the extra. It's the light. You can buy a lot of what do you call it? This painkillers. You can drink them. Every day. And these painkillers, they have different colors. Until you get to the doctor and ask him to do an x-ray, you will not be able to know what is wrong with us. That is why church of the loving God, hallelujah, amen. We have to get to Dr. Jesus. The great X-ray machine. Get into that light. So that that light can help X-ray. And identify the problem. Amen. Apostle Paul. Apostle Paulus. Are you still here? Let me you say, brother, it has been a long time since I prayed. And nothing is happening. You know, you were not there when it happened. You were not there when it happened. You have to position yourself. 
the blessings of God has not stopped. Because you don't get the blessing. You might say, Brother Nikki, there's a hard statement. The blessings of God has not stopped because you are feeling that you are not blessed or that you have been struggling for so many years. I'm just thinking about my own dad. For so many years, for more than 25 years, he has been struggling in the mission field. No money. No good car of his own. He didn't have a second pair of shoes. Lord, you ask yourself, what is wrong? The blessings of God has not stopped. It has been falling all the time. The only problem is we have not positioned ourselves to receive those blessings. The rain is falling in Bloomfontein. And not because it's not falling in Carriero today. We might say the rain has stopped forever. No. You have to position yourself in Bloomfontein to enjoy the rain of God. To enjoy the rain. You cannot say now I'm in Carriero. There's no rain. Has God forgotten about us? No. The rain has been falling all the time. Amen. The blessings of God is there. All the time. Amen. You say, Brother Nikki, oh, you and when you got married, when I know you, those quality wives are gone. I am looking for years now. I don't find them. No. They are there. You are out of position. Amen. Those good wives are there. But you are out of your position. That's why you can't find one. Because every time she comes, you are busy with something else. Every time God sends your wife, then, the, then she hears. A prayer request for Brother Clason. He, he has just backslided. You froze us down. You said, Your wife was there. And then you were running around with other girlfriends. Now you are complaining that we have married the last good ones. No! They have been there all the time. The same with you young girls. You say, Brother Nikki, where can we find good husbands again? They are there. You are the position. Find your position. Find your position. No, brother. Huh? I'd rather study and work. The good brothers is gone. They are finished. They are not finished. They are not finished. They are there. Amen. Those young men are there. But you are out of your position. You are in a university. You are in a college. You have become a lawyer. You have to become a doctor. You have to become this and that. The blessings of God has not stopped. The blessings of God has not stopped. The blessings of God has not stopped. They are there. Bamu. Maybe they are not educated. Mushuma habarute. But they are there. Mar bamu. That's why you get involved in the wrong company. You study so many years until you forget about everything. And it's going to be very difficult for you, young girl, to hang up your, your clothes of the degree. 
Your diplomas. Your degrees. Degree. When God sends you your husband. And he's just a normal municipality worker. Or maybe he's a missionary. Nephew, sister. I want you to be my wife. To be a housewife. Hey. 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 And then you underestimate the power of God in that brother. You are underestimating the power of God. Say, brother, let me think about it. I'm sorry for the brother because there's the last time he will see you. And after 10 years, God sent him another young sister. And then one day, the brother comes to church with his compressor. And then, then, then you see the brother's wife. You see the children. Then you start to hear the testimony of where the God took the brother. And you are still single. And you have so many disappointments. One disappointment after, after the other disappointment. And now you want to blame yourself. Yeah. 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 It's too late. Yeah. Then you ask yourself, what happened? Did the brother play the lottery? Or did the brother know? When you walked away, the brother walked closer into the presence of God. And while the brother was in the presence of the Lord, God gave him a housewife. God knows his needs. God started to bless him. Church. The pastor is not going to allow me any more to preach in this church. I just, something came to mind. The ark. David. David. King David. They wanted to move the ark. I want to give you the scripture. I want the young people to read these scriptures. I don't know where's all my notes. I'll try to get it quickly. They wanted to remove the, 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 the ark. What happened? Wait a second. The ark. Areka. Somebody came and touched the ark. But I want to give you the whole scripture. So you can go read it. And then. The ark. Was placed. In another brother's house. Hey, but that, hey. That's it. Hey, amen. The ark Areka. was placed. Yabewa. The ark was a symbol of the awesome presence of God. You are walking away from the brother. Because he's not educated. He can't the ark Areka. was placed. First Chronicles 12, 23. Go through the old scripture there. Never take God's presence for granted. His presence is what you put him by. The ark was a symbol of the presence of God. On the one hand, God's presence brought great blessing. For those three, three, is it? Three months. Three months. Brothers and sisters, the ark was kept for three months. Three months. Three months. Three months. In the house. Obed. Obed. For three months. The Lord bless. Listen, listen, listen. listen. I'm underlining this. 
I'm taking a big black mark and I underline it. In Jesus name. The Lord bless his household. And everything he had. Because The Lord bless his whole household. Everybody that was in that house was blessed. And whatever he had, if he had a farm, the farm was blessed. If he had goats, the goats multiplied. If he had pigs, the pigs multiplied. The cows multiplied. Position yourself for your breakthrough, for your blessing. Let me close with this. Never underestimate the power of God. 21 years ago, I got married to my wife. I said, sister, I don't know you, but the Lord tells me that you are my wife. There was no cell phones. There was no WhatsApps. There was no Facebook. No Twitter. No television. Nothing. I went to her. I said, sister, it's the first time for me to see you. I wonder, can the brothers be so bold? So bold. And just step up to the sister. No matter if you haven't got a good job. No matter if you don't earn a lot of money. If you have enough boldness in you. To step up to the sister. As a sister. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm standing before you. In the name of Jesus. The Lord. The presence of God is all over me. You are my wife. I want the sisters to expect such verses right now. Ready? Sisters, be ready. This is another age. The Lord is coming. And we need things to be done quickly. Quickly. Don't postpone, brother. Don't postpone, sister. 20 years, 1 years. Eh, back in I told my wife. I said, sister. The Lord told me. You are my wife. She said, brother. If the Lord spoke to you. Amen. 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 Today. 21 years. 21 years. No WhatsApp. Do WhatsApp. No picture. The picture is not. No SMS. The SMS didn't she didn't have to, to figure to change my picture on the, on the, on the pro profile. What do they call that? Where they change? They put the nose better, your face. What do they call it? What do they call it when they change the picture? No, no, the status, the, the state, but the picture. The, 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 what, what, no, when they put color. Add, is it edit? She didn't have to do what? Or to collage, or whatever the name is. Or she didn't have to change my picture. Oh, but brother, I see, I see, I see. I feel like the right side of his face. Hey, how? Yeah. Hey, he, he, he has hey. something there. I don't like it. Because I can't every hide. time I must look at the picture, so what I'll do, oh, I, will, I will use my, my, the quality of my phone. To to change, change it a little bit. With, with his ears is too big, I make it smaller. Yeah, the, it's His like nose is too big, I make it. <laughs> My wife didn't have to change nothing. It was thus say the Lord. Let me Twenty-one years of God's grace. Apostle Paul. Apostle Paulus. May God help us this morning. 
To enter his presence. The presence of God requires respect. Great respect. Anything that tries to interfere with that will be brought to judgment. David had a great respect and reverence for the presence of God. Let's close with Apostle Paul. Oh my. Hey. Acts chapter 16. You love the Lord. Apostle Paul. Paul. Remember the longer we spend in the, the, of the, God, the light of his presence starts to recover. It diagnoses. It opens up. It, 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 oh, that's a that's a mistake. That's the problem. Let's let's fix it. Remember Apostle Paul. How Apostle Apollos? First Corinthians 15 verse 9. First Corinthians 15 verse 9. Just pick it up quickly for me, brothers. One brother can look in the book of First Corinthians 15 verse 9. And one brother can look for Ephesians 3 verse 8. And one brother can look in the first book of Timothy 1 verse 16. Do you have it ready, brothers? First Corinthians 15 verse 9. Ephesians 3 verse 8 and also 1 Timothy 1 verse 16. Let's look in closing. We know Apostle Paul. We know Paul what, kind, what life he lived. He was a man that followed the children of God. He killed them, he cut them to pieces. But what happened with Paul? What was Paul? Wait, I think After he met God, after he was in the presence of God, remember Apostle Paul described himself. First Corinthians 15, verse 9. Who will read for us? You can read, brother. Just read hard enough. First, first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 9 for I am the least of the apostles Amen. that I am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God thank you my brother for I Paul the least of the apostles that's a man in the presence of God He says, I apostle, your apostle. Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul and I am the least of the apostles. And later on, Ephesians 3, verse 8. Brother Francis. Mwina Francis. Take. Take. Unto me. Who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Look at it. For I, your apostle, I am less than the least. I am less than the least of the Today, when somebody is an apostle, everybody is just apostle, this apostle. Are we learning a lesson here today? Paul says, I am the least of the apostles. I am nothing. I am nothing. Brother Sylvester, do you have first Timothy for us? 
He says, I'm the least of the apostles. That's a man in the presence of God. And he moves away from apostleship. He says, in, 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 in Ephesians 3 verse 8, he says, I am less than the least of God's people. I am the least than the I am less than the least of God's people. But I'm shocking you with the last scripture. First Timothy 1.16. First Timothy 1.16. That is why, while our brother getting himself ready to read for us, that is why this morning expectation as we approach the presence of God, Amen. something must happen. Amen. Listen to the First Timothy one sixteen. Amen. First Timothy one sixteen. I'll be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Christ, uh, Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering. For a pattern that to them we should hereafter believe on him to etern to life etern uh, everlasting. Amen. Amen. Just speak it further, bro. Now unto the king eternal. Let me just pick it up. Immortal. Immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Verse 15, amen. Amen. One verse 15 it says, This is a faithful saying. And worthy of all accept acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief. Amen. Amen. Hey. Amen. Pastor Shanik. Mughuti Shanik. Paul calls him the chief of the sinners. We pizza. Yahudimu. Baitantipi. Nakimana. Kimana now. He says, an apostle. I am an apostle. I am the least of the apostles. He says, I am less than the least of God's people. And Paul says, this is the faithful saying, and worthy of all exceptions, that Christ Jesus come into the world to save sinners. He came to this world to save sinners. Who am I? Who are, who are we? We are sinners saved by the grace of God. Sinners saved by the grace of God. And here come Apostle Paul. He said, I am Paul. I, Paul, I am the chief of the sinners. Paul says that I am the chief. Amen. In the presence of God. You realize that you are nothing. Paul says that I am a chief sinner. I am a chief sinner. He says, Christ, I Christ came to save sinners. He says, whom I Paul is the chief of these sinners. Lord, help us this morning. Remember, it's not Apostle Paul that God was. It is simply because Paul to this awesome power of God in this presence of God Paul become aware of the light shining in his heart and 
no matter what he has done wrong, he knew that all that was forgiven. How? How? He can we raise our hands in prayer? Is there somebody that say, Lord, today, today, Lord, I want to be in your presence. I want to spend more time in your presence. I want to spend more time in your presence. Amen. Expecting Tibello. Come under expectation. When you come into the presence of God, allow Him to diagnose you. Allow the Holy Ghost to take His time in you. Don't go out too quickly. Don't leave His presence too quickly. That's why our lives is so miserable. That's why so many things go wrong in our lives. Because we are leaving His presence too quickly. We are going out of His presence too quickly. Let's spend more time. Let's spend more time in His presence. Oh Jesus. Hey, Jesus. If there's anyone that needs prayer, just raise your hand today. How na le motho ya hloka nthapelo. Ha phamisa le tsoho. Stick na to hunt for more up. Oh fella phamisa le tsoho. If you need to repent, repent. Ha hloka pa ko pa. If you need to cry, cry. Ha hloka o laul. If you feel guilty, that's the Holy Ghost. If you feel that you are that you are, that, that you are in the light. If you can feel that light now. If you can feel that light now. If you can feel that presence. If you can feel that conviction. Hallelujah. Let there be nothing. Let there be nothing. That keep you away. To give your life to the Lord. Let there be nothing today. That stands in your way. To repent. Give your life to the Lord. Say, brother, I need an experience of God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. While His presence is here. While that light is upon us, while the light of His glory is upon us, allow Him to diagnose. Allow Him to diagnose. Allow Him to search the heart. Allow Him to search the heart. We are here under expectation. Don't leave this place the same. Don't leave this place the same. If you know young boy, if you know young girl, that God has spoken to your life, that the light of God is upon you. Don't leave this place the way you have come into this place. Repent. 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 Repent of all your sins. Let the light of God shine upon you today. Come back to Him. Come back to Him. Receive His glory. Receive His presence. Anyone today? While we are closing this service, if you have raised your hand, just wherever you are, morning day, just stand. When I came and I come out to her, so that I can pray as we close. Just stand if you have raised your hand. And you know and you feel the light of God. How do you feel You feel His presence. All over you this morning. Paul says that I am the Jesus. Lord, you have come for sinners. Save them from their sinful life. Paul says, Lord, I am. I am the chief of them among them. I'm the chief. Father, we pray. Amen. 
Lord Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Father, while we are feeling your presence, we can feel that light. Shining over us today, we can feel that how the Holy Ghost is diagnosing Father, we are praying today while your presence is moving from heart to heart, life to life. Person to person today. Father, we pray. Lord, do a mighty work. Father, find those mistakes. Find all those problems. problems. Let your great light shine upon you. Father, come and make yourself known. Make yourself known. Today, today, amongst your children, today, Father, today, Lord, as we repent of all our sins, we repent of all our wrongs, we repent of all our unbelief, we repent of all our wrongs, we are really, really realizing now, as we are standing in your presence, Lord, that we are just sinners, saved by your grace. Lord, look at all those hands. Look at all those hearts. You know the needs. You know the desires. You know the shortcomings. Lord, as your light now, circle around us. While your presence is here, Lord, we realize that we are nothing. Help us as we draw closer to your presence. Positioning ourselves, Lord, to receive a blessing from you today. Father, we pray for every head. We pray for every life. We pray for every young boy, every young girl, every family, every brother and sister. We pray for our pastor. We pray for our father. May you strengthen him, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, today for those believers, Lord, those believers that are streaming in wherever they are this morning. May you bless their homes. May you bless their lives. May they touch you this morning. May they feel your presence. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you this morning for your presence. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come in. Let's raise our hands as we worship the Lord. Tell him this morning. Tell him this morning. Let's sing it one more time. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart.
sing it with all your heart this morning. Remain by me, oh, oh my. Sing it out of the depths of your heart this morning. Remember me, remember me, remember me. By me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. My, 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 my. What a time we had. Amen. Did you enjoy the word of God? Did you get what we expected? Did he come your way this morning? Did he speak to your heart this morning? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With that we can say thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Father we thank you. We appreciate thee. We glorify your holy name. There is none like thee O God. Thank you Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just thank him this afternoon. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we appreciate this. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank thankful. Amen. Amen. And I believe each and every one of us has something to take home with. Amen. The young people you have had. The married people we have had. The elderly we have had. 
and like the people of Beria who will carry home and go back in those scriptures again and say amen hallelujah amen you can take your seat hallelujah amen would like now to change the atmosphere a bit let us just bow our heads before we invite our pastor gracious heavenly father in the name of Jesus Christ your children came ready father you have spoken we have come with empty cups. Father, you have filled. We have come needy. And Father, you have provided. You are a faithful God. You have been so true to us, O oh God. That Jehovah, you have come in those areas, O oh God. Where we so desired help. Where we needed a touch from thee. And Father, you spoke in a mighty special way. You used your servant in a peculiar way. To touch our needs. To speak to the young people. To speak to the married people. To speak to the elderly. In a mighty special way. For the unexpected. We will come in your presence. Father you said draw nigh unto me. And I will draw nigh unto thee. Jehovah we thank you. We appreciate thee. May you restore virtue to the minister. May you restore virtue to your servant. You have used him in a special way. We are thankful O oh God. We glorify your holy name. And we believe this afternoon that Jehovah our hearts are full. Like your pastor and his friend, when we leave this place, we'll say we're hearts not burning within us as he was talking to us. Oh, we are thankful. We appreciate thee. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. Let it bless his holy name. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Nikki. Amen. Let's welcome our dear Pastor. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just come sanitize. Amen. Amen. See, the problem is, you know, is uh, wounds, heal soul, which is a virtue of the human being. But we need to tell the human race, my friend, don't you think it's time to reposition your mindset? Seems like you're dying of thinking too much. It seems like nothing is moving you. Reposition yourself. And, and I'll, I'll preach them a message line by line, yes. He repositioned himself.
position myself now. Amen. It is just because I'm I'm going to talk slow, and but you can't give me this in the tent. It's it's, it's rough. It's another position, another position. Amen. It's like the soldiers. You see them walking here very slow and upright, and God bless you. But you you get them in war. You ask Brother Francis, in war. Amen. There's no time shaking and hugging and. And God bless you, because the enemy is right on the <laughs> right, right on the doorsteps. Amen. So, so it's it's tough. You reposition you all the time. Praise the Lord and thank the Lord for using His servant. It's my son, but He's God's servant. Amen. I I will have to reposition myself as His dad. To respect him, to respect the ministry, to respect the gift, you see. And uh, and uh, while he was preaching, uh, the scripture came to me in First Corinthians chapter uh, one, uh, verse twenty-nine. Uh, that. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen ye, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Oh my, no flesh can ever receive glory in the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord makes you so humble. Some prophets couldn't even utter a word. You, you know what most prophets did when they came in the presence of the Lord? I'm nothing. Some of them, you know, prayed, confess. And if you look at our generation now, it seems like flesh doesn't know how important it is to have the right approach in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It becomes a boasting approach. A boasting approach. But we thank the Lord. Amen. That our glory is in Christ Jesus in nothing else. Praise the Lord. We had a prophet in this generation. He was a great man, but he taught us humility. He taught us, if you want to be the greatest, see how humble. And then he emphasized on humility and see how humble you can get more. He's trying to show us. And that's why we are so thankful for the Lord. Amen. Now, uh, I'm going to bless Brother Nicky's anniversary and his wife, 21 years married. Praise the Lord. And may the Lord add more years. Uh, we are living in the, like, like they say, in, 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 in grace minutes, the, the referee has already blow the whistle. The prophet has already blowed the permanent, what you call the, the permit time, the perm time of, of the playing of the match. He, he blow the whistle already. Playing time is over. Sometimes in football it's 90 minutes and uh, rugby is eight, 80 and you know, so Malachi 4 has already blowed the whistle. Time up. And now you're playing on uh, extra time. We are in extra time. Extra time now. Extra time. Who believes that? Extra time. There's no more time left. So if you are not saved, if you are not born again, please hurry up. Receive Christ before it's too late. 
God has blessed us, blessed us with the river that's running here. Very simple. Can, can you see the presence of the Lord? Amen. The presence of the Lord. Three people were baptized Sunday year. The river that runs here is uh, presenting the humility of, 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 of the riches of God. Uh, presenting the grace of God, it presenting the dirty Jordan. Amen. It presenting, amen, three Naamans, three Naamans were baptized. Where's the Naamans? Naamans. Praise the Lord. <laughs> amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. You did what Naaman has done. It, it, was, uh, it was not so easy for him. But when Brother Dan asked you to raise your hand, it was easy. You have already acknowledged the mercies of God. Amen. There was no pushing and fighting and all that. You just went straight to the River Jordan. Naaman find it difficult. We heard this morning because of his position. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, Amen. I've received so much inspiration this morning. Amen. The moment he repositioned himself from his status as a commissioner, as a general of the army, to a humble sinner, just do nothing. Healed. Healed. So, it's not difficult to come in the presence of the Lord if you know exactly what to do. There was a centurion. You know what he said? Yeah. He said, Jesus, Master, Master, you don't even have to come. What kind of faith is that? Great. He said, you don't have to come to my house. I'm a man in command. I'm a man of authority. If I, if I tell this group here, the recruits, if I tell them, take your bags, your rifle and all, and run in this direction. They run. And then, if I tell another group, come, they come. Speak the word. I know what authority is. Praise the Lord. He know what position is. So believers, we thank the Lord. Uh, can, can, can we reposition ourselves? Uh, praise the Lord. I'm thankful the food, everything is ready. Can the married couples come sit in front here? Uh, I just want to say one or two things to them. Uh, Pastor Nick and his wife, you can sit right here in, in, in the middle here. Amen. Sister Ebenezer, come. Pray. Yeah. The, 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 the married couples, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. Amen. That's too close. Yeah. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise His wonderful name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, now, many uh, of the sisters, the married sisters, are not here, brother, so you can convey the message, you can uh, share what you have heard here. Uh, many brothers, brothers are not here, married brothers. Sister, you can share uh, uh, with your husband when you get home. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, 
yes, uh, uh, it's your wife here, yeah, pray, sister. Okay, come, sister, sit right there. Praise the Lord, amen. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Just for a short, short, short while, amen. Reposition yourself, amen. It's God's grace and God's mercy. Message perfect faith. Uh, the prophet used a certain couple, a certain couple in marriage, and uh, in marriage is what we need is to acknowledge one another's position very very important that's why uh, many times you will see husbands do what the wife is supposed to do and the wife is supposed what she does is what the husband was supposed to do that's why the prophet said you must watch the American woman uh, when the workplaces are closing workplaces are closing you'll see her outside in the garden wearing a pants and wetting the garden wets the garden and the spade and all that he said the reason she does that is to attract the attention of man that comes from work and he says She's naked, almost naked. Can you see? She, she does that with a intention. Out of her position. We want to encourage married people to acknowledge the position of one another. Brother Ben speaks of helping one another. But it does not become a command or it does not become something uh, that becomes uh, like uh, you know it's, uh, it's, it's a real it, it must be done it must be done praise the Lord the prophet said sometimes I take a, a apron a man take an apron and help my wife watching washing the dishes you see yeah but uh, it's it's it that is what marriage is all about but if you if you do it once uh, it does not mean you must you must do it all the time is that right it, it does not mean yeah you can't you can't force you can't force anything on a person that's married that's not her or his position. It's very hard. That's why uh, uh, we were driving, passing some woman with uniforms on. And I told Sister Debbie, uh, you know what the prophet says? It's a curse to every country. It's a disgrace to see a woman with a uniform. You see that? Because he knew what is her position. You see? So everything we're looking at is when that person is placed in the rightful position, it's a blessing. That marriage is a blessing. It's a great blessing. It, it, it performs wonderful. It's a blessing. Amen. Everything runs smooth. Sisters, if your husband do anything in the house, in the kitchen, wherever it is. Sister Shalnik normally gave me the broom, she said, because I'm an expert in sweeping. Yeah. 
So I told her one day, I said to her, sweetheart, it's not compulsory. I'm just helping. So, okay, no, I, it's fine, it's, it's all right. It's not, it's, uh, I'm just helping. Amen, I'm just helping. So, what we uh, must understand, don't force anything. Don't, don't give instructions to uh, your, 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 your mate, your partner, unless you know her position and his position so that the marriage can run smooth. You see, that's why in, in, in the old school, in the old school, uh, you know, when we got married, we never carried babies around in church. It was a shame for a man to carry babies around in church. It was, yeah, we do that at home. Can you see that? Our, 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 our sisters knew that brothers are always active in church, always active. And you cannot be active with the Bible in one hand and the baby. In the, you, you, you can't perform. You, you must reposition yourself you know praise the lord and now many times the sisters you know uh, what they normally say i've never heard that from sister Shani, it's your baby too i've never heard that yeah it's your baby too it's your children too i've never heard that there are certain things that i'm listening to now that is very strange that's why I want to encourage our young married people, just go back to the principles and your marriage life will be blessed. Amen. You will find your position and he finds his position. I'm really thankful, you know, I've witnessed the life of Pastor Nick and his wife, they lived before us, you know, every day. And I'm really thankful for the Lord that they have repositioned themselves in what they are doing, you see. Natural, spiritually, whatever they are doing, hey, amen, you must reposition yourself. If the Lord calls your husband, if your husband uh, does certain things or, you know, there must be a wife that needs to support him. Is that right? And if, if, if the wife, you know, uh, 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 is doing the washing or she's busy and she's all that, you know, and, uh, and, and brother, and you have the money and uh, to buy a washing machine when they are on special, it's about... Uh, special 2000 something two and a half on special and you have the money uh, why must our hands why must a hands wrinkled up before 60 why must he look like an old lady amen oh, while as the preacher was saying buying data, you buying this, you buying that, and you froze hand. Oh, yeah. the, the, the water, the soap. Praise the Lord. You know, what I did, you know, when Sister Shanik became older, you know, and all the ailments she had and all that, we were changing washing powders. You know? So that it can be soft on her hands when she uh, take it out and hang it up and all that. So you as a husband, as soon as the Lord bless you, the first person that must be blessed from your pocket is your wife. Who agrees with that? Let me see who agrees with that. 
Is, is, is it difficult? Why did you marry her? Why did you marry her? If you don't understand what marriage is all about. I did everything to support her, to help her, you know. And uh, later on, I made adjustments when we went to shopping or groceries or to the malls. You know what she will tell me? Drop me off right here in front of the, of the where, where there's no parking, no stopping. Sweetheart, just drop me over here. My feet, I can't walk so far. Then I said, you will have to get out quick now because I might get a ticket here. You see, you're making in marriage life, you make adjustments to bless and keep your partner happy. We don't want married people coming here upset and having a fight before church. Who's going to be blessed? Who's going to be blessed? Who's going to receive a blessing when we're fighting all the time? Praise the Lord. Let's make adjustments. Let's see what the needs is of one another. Amen. Before you acknowledge the needs of the family, you know, people outside the marriage, the sacred vows that you have made. Sacred vow. That's why it is important. Brother Bram speaks of a young married couple. And the young man had a weakness. It was drinking. And especially when he's, when he gets his pay, when he gets his wages, when he, Fridays, when he gets his uh, paycheck in America, they call it a paycheck. Then he will slip into the, into the, into the bar and buy some drink, you know, with the workers, with the friends and all that. He had a weakness of drinking. He was a social drinker. He did not, he was not a heavy drinker. And uh, and one day he came home and his sweetheart, his wife, uh, told him after the food, everything was ready. She was always she kept her position, you know. Coffee, everything was ready. She hugged him, everything. She said, sweetheart, I know the temptation is hard for you. Because you are a young Christian. And you're struggling with drinking. She said, but I want to tell you. This is what I like. I will always pray with you. Sisters, it's a great advice. When things go wrong in your marriage life, go on your knees. Praise the Lord. You, you heard it many times when Sister Sharnik made those statements. It's easy to pray to God than to talk to people. You heard that many times, sisters. She said, it, it, it's easy to go on your knees and speak to the Lord than speak to the family and to speak to someone else. Because God cannot take your story all over and tell other people what you prayed about. But family members, friends can do it. Is it right? Praise the Lord. Amen. I will always pray for you if you fall in temptation. She calls it temptation because she knew he was not a regular drinker. And, and, and it's a fact, eh? Because if you don't have money, you'll see the man the whole week is sober, he's not drunk, nothing, there's no money. 
don't have airtime, there's no money. We don't have, there's no, so, so money, so Fridays, when they receive this paycheck, that's the time when he is getting a little bit loose. You know, you, that's why you find many people, they are the sweetest. They are so good in manner when they don't have money. S sometimes you think, man, hey, if we can keep money away from this brother, this cousin, this, you'll be such a nice person. Because look how he behaves himself, you know. But as soon as he receives money, gets wild. So she calls it a temptation. Many times we fall in temptation and we make decisions and reposition ourselves on decision. I'm going to leave you. I'm uh, sick and tired. I'm going to quit. It's only a temptation. And you can overcome temptation. You can overcome it. When we pray together. Amen. I'll wait for you. That's what she said. I'll wait for you. Now, the contrast is, Brother Francis, if you drink again, don't come to the house. Where do you send that man to? If you tell him, because he might surprise you, one Friday he might be sober. And you have already told him, please don't come to the house when you are drunk. But on that certain Friday, the boss told them all, I'll pay you next week. It's fortnight. It's fortnight. Then you as the wife is so stressed up. I told your father. I told him. If he's drunk, not his foot in the door. Here comes the man. He's not even smelling. Oh, what happened? Yeah, the boss is going to pay us fortnight. So we must understand what temptation is. Temptation is not a permanent thing. That's why Paul said, the very same Paul that Pastor Nicky was speaking about, he said, I'm repenting daily. What surprises me of the modern day apostles and this apostle, he was a man that understand confession. He was a man that understood if I do anything wrong, I'm obligated like any other churches uh, can pray for me. That is what humility is all about. Amen. And this is what he, she said to him. She said to him, sweetheart, you must understand I married you because I loved you. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. I married you because I loved you. Amen. You know what he did? He went back to work and he told his colleagues at work, told them about the experience he had with his wife. He said to them, how in the world can any man hurt the feelings of such a woman? And he repented. That was the last day of drinking. He said to them, how in the world can I do anything wrong to hurt this woman and that was the last week that he drank 
So I want to encourage the married couples, married young uh, people. You will go through a lot of temptations, a lot. But love is the bottom line. Praise the Lord. Love is the bottom line. Amen. That's why uh, when uh, Sister Shani became, you know, uh, sick on uh, different occasions and and uh, she couldn't handle everything because it was sugar diabetes, it was a lot of things, feet were paining and all that. And every time I ensured that you, you must because the situation is there now. Say something that will show her, praise the Lord. Now, you know, I, was, I was always thinking, if, if you are not married on the basis of love, and she gets sick, and she gets old, and she can't work anymore, what will you tell her? What will you tell her? You see? You want water? I'll get it for you. You want pulse? Can you see your level? Your level is on pulse and medication. If you don't feel good, uh, the doctor is around the corner. You can say nothing else. That's all you say. But if you, if you tell her, you know, if you tell him, I've married you because I loved you. Sometimes it brings healing. Smile on the face. Um, uh, must, I t must I still take you to the doctor? No, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary. Some husbands can't even speak and tell their wives, I love you. You know what they told me in the Eastern Cape? It's a tradition, it's a culture. Husbands must not kiss wives in the public. But how is it possible that he can kiss another woman in the public? That's why I was asking this man. I said, sir, how is it possible? You say it's a culture. A married man must not kiss his wife. But how, what kind of, is there a culture there? What is it? I said, it's a misbehave. It's wrong. It's not scriptural. Praise the Lord. It's not scriptural. It's a culture, but not scriptural. It's very important. On the basis of love, no matter what went wrong, what, what goes wrong, temptation, whatever it is. Yeah, you know. Uh, uh, the children could not understand when, when there's misunderstandings uh, between me and and then and, and oh my you know and uh, and we def on certain things i will keep on telling her sweetheart let's do it this way sweetheart let's do it it's wrong so they could understand how the word sweetheart can come in a conflict you see that it is part of our lives praise the lord you can even, you can misunderstand your husband. But when it seems like when many married couples, when mar many married couples, when they get upset to one another, they will call you, man, I'm telling you. Uh, they'll call you, they will even call you the, the names that the people outside your friends call you at work. you nothing. But when we understand what love is, we will respect each other even when we misunderstand, misunderstood one another. Amen. So we as married people, you know, uh, it's very important in the marriage life that you must be able to accommodate one another. Amen. Because we're raising children. Uh, the children, when they were all small, they always said, they've never seen us in an 
argument, fighting, screaming, shouting, you know, it's in the bedroom, that's, that's our private, that's our private office, the private office is in the bedroom where you sit down and the children is playing outside and you sort out the things in the marriage life and when you open that door and you come out there happy everybody's happy make some tea there and there you are it's very important we're living in a very very sensitive age we need to know our position we need to know each other's position and God will bless you for that amen it's like brother Nicky is a farmer and to be a farmer you will have to reposition your time schedule is that right brother Dan? they wake up at four o'clock farmers if you travel the highway you'll see lights of tractors yeah. a normal man will never understand that lifestyle let's call it a city man a city man a, a, a town will never he will say that man is unfair to himself that man is killing himself the farmer is not killing himself He's producing food for us. And he knows exactly what time must this be done. Seed must be planted. This must be. And you see all the farmers and the workers is all on the farm. Is that right? Amen. Oh, now the wife will have to recondition herself to sleep alone from four o'clock. Oh man, five o'clock, he's up, he's gone on the farm. She must recondition herself. So there are many things that we need to sacrifice to make our marriages work and makes everything runs smoothly in the way that God has planned it for us. It will be a great blessing. And what I've also realized, you don't lose anything when you give up your pride. Oh man. You don't lose anything. You will be respected, highly respected, until you become the hero of your family. Until you become, you know, you don't tell everybody I'm the boss of my own. I'm the side. The family will testify. They, they, they will. The children will testify who you are. So we trust in the Lord that our married people, our married young people, you go through temptations, I know that. But as the time goes on, as the years goes on, you'll find out your natural desires are dying out. Your natural desires are dying out. You're looking now to the going away, the rapture, eternity. There's a time for everything as Proverbs says. Time to die, time to live, time to eat, time, you know. There's a time for everything. So when you get older, that's why we just want to thank the Lord for our elderly people here. They are very contented. Very contented. Because we also had a young life. And we and in that time, in that season, we did everything that was in our might. Is that right? So remember you did your own washing your own clothing, your ironing, is that right? Yeah. But now, if you don't give it up to someone else, to your grandchildren, to people that comes to help you, it's stressful. 
it accumulates more pain, more suffering. Because you can't understand. You can't do it yourself. But the time will come where you need to admit you can't do it yourself anymore. Amen. That's why I always admire, you know, the go that many of our brothers has. Appreciate it now. Appreciate the, the strength, the, the, what you had. To, to, we need you. But there will come a time when you won't be able to be so active. And it seems like when that time comes, amen, it's very hard for people to share authority and to give up. I don't know why for. Because the younger generation can still enjoy their experiences. Amen. Can you believe that presidents can run a third term? Why for? Why for? There's a president now, election, I don't know in which country. He's 78. He's running for third, the third term. Why are people so selfish? If you see, you can't do it anymore. There are people, there are men that you have trained. And I think it's a blessing to sit down and enjoy what you have produced. It's a blessing to, to enjoy and to be blessed with what you have planted. But the human race has got a, a, a way of a mental, you know, thinking, if I give up, if I do this, I, if I, yeah, I might die, uh, the people won't, they won't respect me anymore. They will respect you even more. Because, you know why? They know what power is. They will say that man knows what authority is. He knows what power is. That's why they will respect you. So I want to encourage all the, the married people here. Hey man, you cannot have a feeling for the, your neighbor's wife. Yeah. Auntie, I just brought you some pills here. I heard you are sick and all that. And your wife also needs pulse. Uh, then you go to the neighbor, your neighbor. Your, oh, my, my husband is, doesn't feel so well today. Oh, you know what's wrong with him? No, I've, got some, I've got some pulse here. Then, sister, you run around and give your neighbors the husband you give him pills while your husband is asking for desperate it's so hard to give him that desperate it, it, it seems like what I can't understand why are people so rough in marriage life so 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 rough and, and so uh, what we call uh, th there's no feeling you can do it yourself you can do it yourself what the children picked up uh, lately is we had the privilege to send one another that was the best time of my marriage is when I send Oma to bring me something and she sent me to bring something <sighs> and you know how big uh, the, the house is in Korea though, that, that passage yeah bring me my cell phone I forgot it bring me my pulse I forgot it then from the room to the uh, get it again I, I've just reach the, the door of the <laughs> there's something else that I, then I go back again okay. 
Now go back. Can you see there? Amen. It takes experience. Experience. It takes experience. And it's nothing else but love growing. It grows. Amen. You become an unselfish husband and wife. You enjoy the privilege of being sending and doing something for somebody. Amen. It seems like there are certain things that we don't want to touch on because uh, especially if you don't do it yourself, DIY, if you don't do it yourself, uh, you won't touch you you don't you won't touch on on feet washing wash your husband's feet and your husband's wash your feet you won't touch on that because you know <laughs> you know you 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 don't you don't uh, do it yourself you know there's an old couple brother tom brown died a few years ago went to heaven you know and she, he and uh, he told us she told us sister brown they were washing one another's feet until they could not bow anymore. That was over 70 when they came, when they reached 80. And she told Sister Elizabeth, Sister Elizabeth, you know, I can't wash Tom's feet anymore because I can't bow. Not, be, not because of, of arthritis. She cannot bow. And she cannot stand up. No. That is experience. That's love. So I want to encourage you that uh, whatever you're going through in marriage is learning processes. It's just learning. Praise the Lord. It's not permanent. Yeah, that, that's why... Uh, when, when you become 60, 70 in marriage life, you look back, all the mistakes that you have done become, become a story. You're laughing now. The grandchildren is laughing. Everybody becomes now, you know, like a, a storytelling book. You, you're telling others now. This is what we did. I can still remember that. But... When it happened, you could not see it as a stepping ladder in marriage. You saw it, you know, as something that was not supposed to happen. Perfect marriages comes out of broken decisions, broken uh, uh, happenings broken mistakes, all that, when it comes to the end, you see a perfect picture. And that's why Paul, as you heard Pastor Beckett was preaching, typing the woman, the Bible begins with the woman in the middle is a woman, at the end is a woman, types the bride of Jesus Christ. It will be so wrong to go back in your past as a Christian. The Bible says God has forgiven your past and put it in the sea of forgetfulness. He said, right. So that is all about marriage. All about marriage. That's why when anything comes up in marriage, you cannot refer back. You cannot refer back. Because you are a type of the bride forgotten. It's done. It's finished. Is that right? We are justified, forgiven. We are sanctified, justified. And we have never done it in the first place. Amen. That's why it's very hard. It's very tough for people to reconcile. It's not so easy like uh, in those days, uh, Sister David reminded me of that. I think you also know the story of that uh, f uh, couple that was separating. And while they were packing, while they were packing their they, they, they clothing and their stuff, they, they, they were
were married out of community or property. So everyone was taken, you know, what belongs to them. Then they realize, the husband realized, I've got one booty of the child. And then when she packed out the boxes, she realized, I've got one boot of the, of the child. So it's now. And they was convicted. Shoes brought them together. Booties of a child. They saw a message in that. We need to be together. This generation. You talk about booties. You talk about clothing in this day, Brother Francis. That's almost if people if people separate. You can you can try everything, everything. They will tell you, I'm not going back to that mess, to that marriage. I'm not going back. That's why learn from those learn from those who made the wrong decision. Don't let us persuade you so much like this morning. You know, I was thinking, if any young brother, any young sister goes out and do something contrary to what you have heard this morning, just what you have heard, just one message, there's something wrong, man. Seems like you, you don't take God serious, serious. You don't take nothing serious. Because why, why did you come to church? That's why we thank the Lord. Amen. We are repositioning ourselves. Thank the Lord, Brother Nikki, for the message. You know, I've lost my wife. I will also have to reposition myself, you know, to make everyone happy, uh, to keep my dignity. Is that right? Amen. And to appreciate what Sister Debbie is doing for me and what everybody is doing for me. You see, you, you change your position in, in a different manner of realizing now there are certain things that you can't do on your own. Somebody else must do it for you. That's why you see so many old people are stressing all the time all stressed up. It's because they don't want to give up their pride. It's very hard for them. And, and that's why we want to encourage our young married people. Make sure, sisters, make sure. Pray with your husband. Husband, pray with your wife. And let's say if you don't pray, do what this lady has done. Prayed. Brother Branham speaks of Zagia's wife. Yeah. Called her Rebecca. Now what will happen one day in heaven? She is Rebecca. You see that? She prayed while he was sleeping. Business people are very tired. It's like brothers that's working. They, they don't pray. They sometimes they get in under the bed. White sheets with dirty clothes and cement. Dirty clothes, cement. If he gets in, he falls asleep immediately because he's tired. Kneel next to his bed. He says, Lord, I intercede now for my tired husband. He sleeps saved him, redeemed him, changed his lifestyle, not to work so much. And I want to see him in the house of the Lord. God is able to answer our prayers. God is able to answer our prayers. I need your prayers and you need my prayers. God is faithful. And to single mothers, single mothers, did you realize 
There's promises in the Bible for widows, widower, single mothers, for children. God made sure there's a portion of Scripture to certain people in certain circumstances. It's God. God knew that. There will be people, there will be mothers left without husbands. Husbands will go and this will happen. Mothers will give up. And God has a message even for children, for anyone, mothers, fathers, wherever you are. So in the position that you are, you must reposition yourself and start reading the Bible, start reading the message to see what your promises is. And I think it will be a great blessing. It will be a great blessing because your encouragement comes from the word of the Lord. Amen. Brother Nikki Seven, is God bless you. Thank you for what you did for mom, did for myself, and what you will still do. God, she bless you, your ministry, and uh, what God had in mind for you. Praise the Lord that God will prosper your ways. Amen. And that God will make everything, amen, for the best as the I heard yesterday one preacher was quoting, I think it's a book of Jeremiah, the thoughts of God for you. It's nothing else, no evil. It's good. And may the thoughts of God be good over your life and no evil. God bless you. I'm going to ask the couples that's here just to come stand next to Brother Nikki and Sister Ebenezer. Praise the Lord. You can just come, the couples that's here. Amen. Brother, if your wife is not here, just come and stand for her here. Sister, if your husband is not here, just come and stand here. Praise the Lord. Just stand up. Stand up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the, praise the Lord. Yeah. Just, just keep the social Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Jesus. It's a great blessing. It's a great, great blessing. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. I lay my life before Oh, you, Jesus, I, I love. Let's lay our lives. Let's lay our lives before. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, I love, Jesus, I love you. Hallelujah. I pronounce the blessings of the Lord, I pronounce, Lord Jesus, the promises of God on this couple today. I want to pronounce a breakthrough. I pronounce deliverance, healing. I pronounce that the great God of Jehovah will open the Red Seas Oh, God, uh, will make a way in the desert. Oh, God, uh, go before them. Bless them as never before. Thank you for the 21 years that you brought them thus far. Now you will lead them further. You will guide them. You will bless them. You will bless their children like olive trees. 
You will bless their tables. You will bless their cupboards. You will bless their finances. You will bless the ministry. You will bless them, Lord. I pronounce blessings, Lord, over their lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I pronounce blessings over our couples. I pronounce blessings over our families. I pronounce blessings, Lord, over our marriage couples. Lord Jesus, may they be knitted together. May they come to agreement. May they understand one another. May they realize, amen, like this woman told her husband, Fridays, it's temptation because you are tempted because you were a drinker. But one day, God will set you free. Thank you, Jesus. Give us the right attitude, the mental attitude, the right approach in every situation. When it's dark, there will be light. That's what we heard this morning. When light comes and appears, when it comes, Lord, everything will be revealed. Help us as couples, help us as married couples, help them this morning to walk in the light so that everything that are supposed to go wrong, everything that comes up, let light expose it quickly. Let light expose it immediately. But as long as we walk in darkness, we will find out over five, ten years there was something wrong in the marriage. We pray for light. We pray for light, amen, so that things can be picked up quickly, amen. When something, if the husband is doing something wrong or planning, the wife is planning in her mind, in her thoughts, light picks up thoughts. Light picks up anything before it exists into manifestation. Bless our couples, Lord. Bless our families in this church, Lord. May they be the lighthouse of this church, Lord. May someone follow their footprints and their example in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the afternoon. Bless what we're going to enjoy, the food, the cake. Bless it richly. Feed our natural bodies. Thank you for the sacrifices of our sisters. Thank you for the contributions. Thank you for everything that you have done for us in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. And we all say amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, Nikki, God bless you. Abby, God receive bless. We walk in the light, such beautiful.